everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we have our final, final, final installment of 9600 BOD. Um, 9600 BOD packet has been a thorn in my new you-know-what for about a month now. I have been beating my head up against the wall trying to get this to work. So you know what? I said I was going to run the gamut. What works, works. What doesn't work, doesn't work. What I can prove, I can prove. We found a lot of problems all the way along the line, not just with TNCs, but, oh my God, with radios as well. So we're going to cover a lot of that today. I hope you enjoy it. Do me a favor, will you? Click on the subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. And if you like the video, please click like. Oh, and you know, if you hit the notification icon, guess what? You'll be notified when I come out with new videos. With that, let's get on with 9600 Bod Packet. All right, everybody. So let's get started with the final summation of the 9600 Bod project for packet. Um, we're going to go through some individual steps. I'm going to sneak back in and out to talk about them and, uh, and let you go with that. But the first step, of course, we're going to set our output. Uh, and I've completely eliminated the FT991 uh, because it just is not behaving properly. And I'm going to have to dig too deep in that to figure out why. So we've moved it all over to the FT8900, which appears to work much better for this application. But with that, uh, have to reset all the levels for the 9612XE. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that piece by piece, okay? All right, so let's take a quick look at our setup here. We're going to use this setup to set our drive level uh, right there. That is my 8900, that's a FT8900 um, from Yesu. And I basically have the coax coming out the back, and I am going over here to this unit right here. This is actually a uh, tap attenuator, and we're basically passing the signal through to a dummy load. And we're tapping off that with about 25 to 30, uh, uh, minus 25 to 30 dB, and going into our SA44 Bravo. Uh, this is a spectrum analyzer. It basically handles 1 kilohertz up to 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, and uh, this is manufactured by Signal Hound. Anyway, that's the setup that we're going to use to configure uh, our output uh, for 9600 on our 9612 XE. All right, so here is a Cantronics 9612 XE. Now we've got it opened up because we need to verify a couple of the shunt jumpers on it. We want to verify, first off, for our starting configuration, we want to verify that we're in factory defaults. Now, um, they speak of two jumpers, jumper J20, which is the drive, in other words, uh, that is what governs what the output's going to be of the radio uh, as far as power level. And the other, J16, has to do with the drive from the receive coming in uh, and how to uh, amplify or change that or equalize it to make it uh, more heard by the TNC. In other words, make the TNC more or less sensitive to the audio input. Okay, so with that, we want to verify that down here, this one, I'm trying to zoom in so you can see it. There's J20 right there, right? And you can see that it's jumped. Uh, and it says right there, 9600 drive range, okay? Now that is going to allow us to put out more audio when we transmit to be heard better by the other side. The other one over here is called the receive level. That's J16. And by default, that is unjumped. And we're going to do our initial test with it unjumped. Now, I opened up a brand new uh, 
one of these and found that the J20 jumper had not been jumped. Uh, and that is a requirement actually for my FT8900. Uh, anyway, with that, let's get on with the show and let's go ahead and try to set our levels as best as possible. Well, all right, so we have our <laughs> we have our spike unit sitting over here running away. Uh, this is the spike software and this is what we access our uh, uh, spectrum analyzer with. First thing I want to do is get it set up for the test. So I'm going to go ahead and center my frequency on where I have the radio tuned, which is 145.090 megahertz. And I'm going to set my span, um, oh, let's go 30 kilohertz. There we go. So that right there. Okay, now uh, let's change our reference to 20 dB. And we'll change our divisions to 20 dV. And that puts us in the range. We want to go ahead now. I'm going to add a second trace just so you can see this. I'm going to go to uh, turn on trace 2 and I'm going to make it uh, max hold, basically. And it's red. So what's going to happen is when I key the radio, we should see it pop up and stay there. Let's go ahead and just key the radio as a test. Now, very important, uh, I've got the attenuator on here, so I'm not going to put too much power into the um, spectrum analyzer, and I'm also running at low power. So uh, I'm being very conservative about my power here. Let's go ahead and key up and see what we have. There we go. All right. So it looks like we're right on frequency. I'll go ahead and step back. That looks pretty good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to zero span this. That should put us here. We'll verify that our channel, channel plot looks good. That all looks really good. All right, now what I want to do is I want to change my analyst mode, and I want to go into analog demodulation. And here I've got my... Uh, peak on both sides of my deviation here, okay, for FM on the far side. Now, what I need to do, though, is I need to get on to my, um, need to get on, there we go. Okay, so this is the 9612 XE, it's been, up oh, asterisk, there we go, I've set my outside bud, need to set my call sign, I'm going to go ahead and put my cap locks on here. Um, let's go ahead. I am in port, uh, let's see, I want to verify I'm in port 2. Yes, I am. Let's see how this is set up. So I'm going to do a HBOD. Uh, no. HBOD, there we go. And yes, port 1 is 1,200, port 2 is 9,600, so I'm set there properly. Uh, let's look at our status, and oh, I'm on 1. Okay, so I need to change to 2 to properly do this. Also, let's see where my default port is set. It's to set, uh, it's set default for port 1, so I'm going to change that to port 2. All right, now, my stream, though, it, yeah, it's still on A1, so it's still on the first uh, instance of channel 1. So I'm going to want to fix that. I'm going to want to change it. And that's really easy. Nobody seems to know how to do this very much with the duals. So I want to put a pipe sign. I now want to go to 2, and A is the first frequency or the first channel. And now if I do status, there we go. I'm on stream two. What do you think of that? So let's take a look also. Let's take a look at our uh, XMIT level just to see what its default set at. Okay, it's set at 64. And I know that's going to be too low. Uh, this number can be anywhere from 1 all the way up to 255. So um, on this particular device, I am aware that's too low. Now I'm going to move this over here so we can see stuff. And what I want to do is I want to go into calibrate now, okay? So, 
Okay, so this is a very interesting menu right here because it allows me to adjust the XMIT level. Now, what the manual says here is go ahead and select T for square wave, and we want to set it for as close to 3 kilohertz as we can over here. So I'm looking again at my peak plus and my peak minus, and I am going to put my mouse right here. Right now, uh, just with the squelch open, we're at about um, 100 kilohertz deviation up and down. I'm going to go ahead, all right, and on my uh, COM10, I'm going to hit T. And there we go. Notice I'm at about 1.3, 1.4. I need to bring that up. So I'm going to hit the plus sign several times. Stop. Um, interestingly enough, when I'm hitting the plus sign, I'm getting false readings. So i got to be kind of uh, ginger about that. I don't want to go too far. Oh, that's really close. Really close. Rather be a little high than a little low. Ah, now it stopped keying. I've got to hit T again. This has a, a key timeout, right, that we have to be careful of. So um, at this point, I can uh, go ahead and hit, uh, what is it? I have to, oh, I have to go in R and then T, I believe. There we go. And you know what? I'm about where I want to be. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to go up just a little because I want it just a little hot. And I'm pretty good with that. I'm pretty good with that. We're going to leave it at 218 right there. All right. To get out of this, I can hit R. And then, of course, I can go ahead and hit X. That will exit me out and save that level. There you go. So we've set the transmit level. The next thing we need to figure out how to do is set the receive level. And that can be a little bit more difficult. Uh, I'm going to do a little doctoring in my uh, setup here. Not a lot, but we don't need the attenuator in here anymore. But you know what? I might just use it just for fun. We'll see. Use the attenuator? Really? Nah, nah, we didn't do that. Um, what we did do is we read the manual, and the manual basically told us a couple different ways to look at this. Um, there was conflicting information in different parts of the manual and everything else. The only thing that was really consistent about it, they talked about checking it with a analog voltmeter and checking it with an oscilloscope. And they said our checkpoints on that would be, believe it or not, pin 8 on the 15-pin RS-232 connector, okay, uh, and ground. And that would be our reference, and it would put out a reference voltage, reference voltage that should run between 2.5 and 3 volts if it's receiving properly. So I found that very interesting. Um, that said, uh, basically... Uh, what I ended up doing is doing the analog meter first and not understanding at all while I was seeing what I was seeing, and then hooking it to an oscilloscope just for voltage reading. They talk about doing a cat eye, and uh, you know what? It, very complicated to set a cat eye display up, so I just didn't chase that. But hold on and check this out, because this was kind of interesting. And I have to tell you, you know, this whole adventure, I learned a lot. So let's go ahead and take a look at trying to get that calibrated. All right. Well, what I've done is, as per the instructions, I've tied into pin 8 and ground on the device. Uh, pin 8 coming out of the 15-pin uh, DB connector, right? Uh, and I've got as they said was best, an analog meter. And I think the reason for that is I'm looking for a, a punch here. In other words, uh, stuff coming up. And they said to send a really uh, long packet. So um, let's go ahead and fire off a reasonably long packet uh, into the receive side and see what happens here, right? I'm on the 
five volt scale, so uh, theoretically, if this thing is putting out three volts or up to three volts, which is where they say you want it, this should be fine. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, it looks like we bounced up to about 1.25 volts there with the default. Let's go ahead and pop a jumper on that. Okay, and I recommend that you do not do this while the power is on, as I just did it while the power was on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set back up. Same string. Let's see if it goes any higher. And just about the same, maybe maintaining a little bit higher. And they talk about messing with the equalizer number here. I tried that and it didn't really work. Let me see where I'm set here. Um, okay, so I'm set at 115. I'm going to go down. Let's go down to the bottom side and see if that even affects it. I'm going to set the equalizer to 1. And let me go ahead and pop in. And we'll send another long packet and see if that affects it anymore. Didn't really see a, much of a change at all. Hmm. All right. Now let's go up to the top with equalize. And we'll go up to 255. That's the high side. So we should see a level change here. Let's see if the voltage goes up. Ooh, not at all. A little bit on the consistent side, though. So, I don't think I've got enough audio coming in, but then again, the truth's going to be in the pudding if I can pick up any packet advertisements. Of course, uh, I'm going to set the equalizer back to where it was because I just want to verify that that actually did something. 115 is the default, so I've set it back to that. I'm going to send one more packet just to see if it really had an effect that's really mattered. No, you know, this, this looks to be exactly the same no matter where I set that. And interestingly enough, if I remove the pin which should reduce uh, the signal that I'm getting in, right? Let's see if I still have the same thing. That's almost identical. Although... Try that again. I see no difference whatsoever here, so I need to see if it's actually receiving packets. So we'll go and take a look at that at this point. Well, I did test it, and it was able to receive packets in Monitor. Um, I did that by generating some uh, just random uh, connect packets out of another system. I saw a monitor, uh, and I also tried to use that system to make a connection, and it just didn't work right. Okay, now, that system is the 991, and I have had nothing but trouble with the 991 to do this. That's why we moved over to the 8900. So to me, none of those tests were really conclusive, and I was really bothered with the voltage. Um, remember, I said there were two ways to test this. The other way was an oscilloscope. So let's take a look at that, and I think you'll find that really interesting. All right, well, after talking to a buddy of mine, uh, he said throw a scope on it. You might be able to get a better idea and send a test pattern. So I'm going to do both here. Uh, let's go ahead and update this. And there we go. There is the scope pattern. 
and it's right about where it needs to be. Now I will tell you that I've thrown adjustments at this and none of the adjustments seem to change anything. So boy, you got me on that one. Uh, let's see if we can make this any uh, different. I'm going to do a receive on this and then let's change it over to a random and yeah, yeah, it's bouncing around a little bit. But you know what? I think we're getting what we want to get here. So yeah, it's definitely variable voltage. N no doubt about that at all. All right. Let me stop this. I'm going to quit out of that. And give me a second. I'm just going to reset something real quick. And I am going to go ahead, change a couple small settings here, and I'm going to send hopefully a bunch of random characters again. Okay, that actually doesn't look bad. Um, that is the same random packets I was sending with the uh, voltmeter hooked up, and you can see, uh, although for only a moment, it climbed on up and peaked at 3.2 volts. So, you know, based on the fact that, uh, you know, the max of 3.12, based on the ma that, I mean, looks like it works fine. So, I will tell you that I was able to send packets to it, and it would reply and do everything else, but I was having trouble with the system on the far side. Um... And I actually believe the reason I was having problems was the configuration of the radio and nothing more. Um, the 991 didn't seem to work very well on this. Um, I'm going to have a synopsis and let me go ahead and elaborate on that in just a minute. All right, so a quick summary. The FT991, total fail with this. Don't know why, don't know if it's a bug with my radio or just a bug in general with the FT991A. Uh, I have a FT991 at the office I could test against, but for the extent of this video, uh, we're done. Okay, I, my FT8900 looks like it behaves exactly the way it should. Everything seems really good on it, so... Um, you know, and I also confirmed that it was receiving 9,600 baud packets. So I'm pretty good about that problem. I don't have enough consistency to be able to connect to any 9,600 packet stations because we really don't have any that is within my reach. Um, a friend of mine set up 9,600, but it was just inconsistent. It, it wasn't up when I needed it, and I, I just got tired of bothering him. Um, so, and again, you know, we're working towards different goals. So, um, with that, I just said, all right, let's go ahead, do all the adjustments we can make sure it receives and call it a day. And that is what I did. Uh, another very interesting finding though, is, uh, according to the documentation on the XE, I should be able to make all those adjustments and changes. Anything I touched didn't change anything I saw. And um, I guess I'm going to have to call Cantronics on that if I want an answer, which I may or may not do as well. At this point, I believe that I do have a 9612XE that's properly configured that should work at 9600 baud, but I have no way to test it, so I cannot confirm or deny it. I can call it plausible that it would work in this environment. Anyway... That's the end of the video, so um, thanks for sticking around for this one. Like I said, I learned a ton, and again, hope to hear you out there. Well, there it is in a nutshell, folks. Um, I do have a call in with Cantronics. I am trying to find out what the correct procedure is for the receive volume on the 9612XE. We'll see if that gets us any place. If I do hear anything, I'll stick that down in the comments as I find things out. But I'm not uh, overly um, 
optimistic that that's going to happen. Um, but, hey, it might. Um, boy, did I learn a lot on this little adventure uh, that started with Vara and uh, went all the way through to this. Um, and I want to say that I learned so much along the way that uh, I have a bunch of videos just on using and evaluating some of the test equipment that I used in these videos and showed you. Um, and uh, we'll be covering a lot of that next, as well as more about VARA. So stay tuned. Uh, and to do that, no better way than to subscribe and click on the notification button down below. But anyway, with that, this is Stu. Uh, oh! If you have any questions or comments, as always, make them down in the comments. And, uh, you know, if you like this video, please click like. With that, 73, everybody. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope to hear you on the air.